the CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Mark Twain was America's greatest humorist. And that's probably true because he was one of the most serious men ever to be born in this country. To Mark Twain, laughter and tragedy were two sides of the same coin. And most of the time, the coin was counterfeit, which in itself is the great joke life plays on most of us. And since life is a jest which ends in a mystery, we are privileged to present one of Mark Twain's greatest mystic fantasies. You can save him. They all think he stole the money. But it isn't true. You can think of everything. Think of something now. Something. Help me. Or call another witness. There are no witnesses. All we have is his own word that he didn't steal the money. You do have a witness. Who? The money. The money? What kind of witness is that? What can money do for him? <laughs> you know the old saying, money talks. Our mystery drama, The Mysterious Stranger, was adapted from the Mark Twain classic, especially for the Mystery Theater, by Sam Dan, and stars Tony Roberts. I'll be back shortly with Act One. in Austria, in a sleepy country village. Here, high in the mountains, there are still demons and evil spirits, and witches are burned at the stake regularly. But for most people, it is a calm place, a quiet place, a prosperous place. My name is Theodore Fisher. I'm the son of the church organist who was also the leader of the musicians, teacher of the violin, composer of the hymns, tax collector of the commune, and in many ways, a useful citizen. I am not useful at all. I have been away to the University of Vienna where I became a lawyer. There isn't much opportunity to practice law here. The priest settles all the religious disputes, and the astrologer... I'll explain more about him later. Settles everything else. Well, it was a beautiful day, and my only annoyance was the fact that my pipe had gone out, and I had neglected to bring a flint with me. Good morning. Oh, good morning to you, sir. Oh, I'm sorry I seem to have startled you. Oh, it's uh, quite all right. Is there any way I can be of service? Service? No, uh, no, no, I don't believe so. There's nothing you require? Require? Oh. oh. Well, I, I would like a light for my pipe. <laughs> a little thing like that must not stand in the way of your happiness. May I? He took my pipe and he... Uh, you must understand this. How can I say it? He... He simply blew his breath on it. And the tobacco glowed red, and spirals of blue smoke rose from the bowl. I jumped up. Please, please, don't, don't be frightened. Uh, but it was just a trick. A trick? Of course. What did you think? I, uh, well, a little conjurer's trick. Hmm? <laughs> what else can you do? Anything, anything. Do you remember when you were a child? You had a toy castle. There were knights and ladies in the courtyard and cannoneers along the walls. I, uh, I do remember that. How would you, how would you know? Well, it's a trick. And now, let us build that castle. Hmm? With what? With this pile of dirt. But, uh, but what? Everything, everyone was dirt to begin with. Isn't that so, Theodore? How do you know my name? What's oh, a trick. 
and really there's absolutely nothing to it. All you do is take some dirt. All he did, all he did was take some dirt. And before you knew it, he made a crowd of little men and little women, each no bigger than your little finger. And they all went diligently to work as they cleared a space of a couple of yards and began to build a cunning little castle. Five hundred of these tiny but living, breathing people swarming about, laboring diligently, wiping the sweat off their faces. I looked at the stranger and I asked, Who are you? An angel. Of course. An angel? Who else? Do you... Do you have a name? Well, certainly. Satan? Satan? <laughs> Why do you seem so distressed? Ah, uh, Satan... Well, that's his name, you know. Yes, I know, I know. He's my uncle. But you said you were an angel. Well, surely you remember he was an angel once himself. Ah, uh, yes, I didn't think of that. Before the fall. But he was blameless. Would it be, uh, would it be rude if, 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 if I asked? No, it wouldn't be rude, and I should forgive you even if it were, yes. Yes, I have. I've seen him millions of times since I was just a little child, hardly a thousand years old. I, I was his favorite. A thousand years old? Mm, I'm about 16,000 years old by now. That is the way you count time. 16,000 years old? You must have seen... Oh, I've seen it all. I, I saw Adam created and Abel murdered. I saw Samson surge against the pillars and bring down ruin and death. Oh, what haven't I seen? Ah, the castle is finished. There. How do you like it? How could anyone help but like it? It's perfect. These people are actually human. It's another world. Someone, someone fire a pistol. No, no, no. It's thunder. Thunder? But there isn't a cloud in the sky. Oh, not in yours, but in theirs. See how the sky above the castle becomes dark and terrible. The thunder, the lightning. People. Poor little people. How could I startle anyone? <laughs> uh, I didn't see you coming. Were you busy with great thoughts? Oh, no, no, no. I, I was merely talking to this... Oh. Well, there was someone here just a moment ago. Oh, yes, yes, my boy. I know it affects me, too. I keep seeing people who aren't there myself. <laughs> What are you doing here, Uncle Peter? What am I doing here? Well, uh, something brought me here, but I I can't seem to remember what. I, I'm not myself these troubled days. I'm, I'm not myself. Well, good day, Master Theodore. Now, as I was saying, where did you go? I merely made myself invisible. Yes, but you should talk to Uncle Peter. He's not dull and ignorant like I am. And besides, he has a beautiful niece, huh? Margaret. Satan. Could you help them? Help them? Uncle Peter. That's what I call him. But he used to be Father Peter. I know. A priest. You know? Yes. Until he was accused of some heresy. It was the astrologer. Why is everyone so afraid of the astrologer? Now, what was the heresy he accused Uncle Peter of? It doesn't matter. It, it was enough to be accused. 
by the astrologer. I see. Uh, you see, folks have nothing to do with Uncle Peter these days, and he and Margaret are about to starve. And you want me to help them? Please. All he needs is a little money to, to pay the rent on his cottage. Uh, buy some food. He might not thank me for it. You might not thank me for it. I try to help him and Margaret, uh, but they're too proud. Wouldn't it be easy for you to have him uh, find, yes, yes, just find some money? It could be dangerous. Why? Well, because it could change the entire course of his life. Yes, but that's exactly what he needs to have the present course of his life changed. Every man's life consists of links in a chain. Each link is an act. It has its proper place in the chain. Remove one link, and the entire future becomes different. But I've been trying to tell you, he needs another future. <laughs> oh, you have a great deal to learn. I shall see you again. Where are you going? I have an errand to perform. You won't help, Uncle Peter. Well, I'm not sure you'll consider it help, but uh, we shall see... What we shall see. And he was gone. As suddenly, as unaccountably as he had appeared. A mysterious stranger had vanished. Was it a dream? My imagination? No. In the first place, I am not a dreamy person. Second, it was too real. Too vivid. And when I was still debating the matter in my mind, I became aware of Uncle Peter. Ah, uh, I, I remember, I remember now, Theodore. What do you remember, Uncle Peter? Why, I have come here. Yes, I, I, I lost my purse. There, there wasn't much in it, but a very little is a great deal to me, for it was all I had. Um, have you seen it, my lost purse? No, uh, Uncle Peter, but I shall be happy to uh, help you look. Uh, that is uh, what I was going to ask you. Yes, <laughs> but... Uh, it, it won't be necessary. Here it is. But... but yes. It, but what, Uncle Peter? It's mine, and, and yet it, it isn't mine. I'm afraid I don't understand. Oh, the purse is mine. Yes, clearly mine, but, but not the contents. This is flat. Mine was flat. This is heavy. Mine, mine was light. Look. I look. Oh! I listened. I could hear the jingle of coins. Gold coins. And then I saw them. As Uncle Peter knelt on the grass and carefully poured the coins on the ground. There were... There were hundreds of them. I'd never seen so many gold coins in my life. Such bright, shining gold coins. It almost hurt my eyes to look at them. They were so bright. So new. So freshly minted. Who, who, who has been here? Why? No, no, you must not lie to me, Theodore. Has, has anyone been here? Not a human being, Uncle Peter. I don't understand. I, I know you're telling me the truth. It, it, it's the money. It comes to over 1,100 ducats. Oh, dear, if it were only mine. <laughs> but it is yours, Uncle Peter, every single piece. No, 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 only four ducats are mine. That, that's all that were in the purse when I lost it. The rest, yeah, and I do need them so badly. Yeah. No, the fact is, this money is not mine. But the money is in your purse. I cannot account for it unless some... Enemy, yes, it's a trap. Oh, but Uncle Peter, with the exception of the astrologer, you don't have a real enemy in the village. Nor does Morgan. No, no, it must be a trap. I must have an enemy. Do you have an enemy rich enough to chance 1,100 ducats just to do you a mean turn? Well, I... Of course I... not. It's yours. Every bit of it. Didn't you pray for help? Yes. Well, uh, isn't this help? Yes. 
Yes, I, I'll take it. And I shall do good things with it. And I'm sure everything will be all right. Of course, Uncle Peter. Everything will have to be all right. But you know and I know that it's not going to be all right. People may get to live happily ever after in many of Mark Twain's stories, but getting there is usually quite a problem. Also, we've been chatting here about someone called the astrologer. He shows up soon to complicate matters. All in all, Act Two will pose plenty of problems when it arrives here in just a few moments. Fisher is telling the story of Mark Twain's mysterious stranger. And Theodore is the only one in the small village who has seen him. The mysterious stranger claims to be Satan's nephew. But by now, we can safely assume it's the old boy himself. Mark Twain always likes to use these little tricks. Throw a surprise visitor into a quiet little town and watch the ripples swell into waves. It made immense talk in the village the next day. Father Peter told the entire circumstance just the way it happened. He said the only way he could account for it was, well, it, it must have been the hand of providence. Suddenly, Father Peter and Margaret had plenty of friends, or at least visitors. Their mothers started sending their daughters to Margaret for piano lessons. And it began to look like the old adage was true. You have no trouble making money once you have money. Oh, Theodore. How long have you been standing there? I didn't want to interrupt you, Margaret. I don't know when I've been so happy. <laughs> I'm glad you have so many friends. Well, it's the gold that has many friends. I still have the very few who always... Well, you know what I mean. And how is your uncle? He's a new man. But I'm afraid. Afraid? Of what? Well, uncle Peter says it was the hand of Providence that brought the gold. And, uh, wasn't it? Well, I believe it was. But there are tongues wagging in the village. There are those who say it's the hand of Satan. Satan? Yes. Oh, how would they know? I mean, uh, why should... Why should Satan want to give your uncle all that money? Theodore, I don't understand it. One day we're poor. The next day we're rich. One day we're alone in the world. And the next day we have scores, hundreds of friends. Don't even try to understand it. Everything will be all right. But one thing troubles me deeply. What? The astrologer. We have yet to hear from the astrologer. Oh, oh, the astrologer. Oh, well, what can he do anyhow? I tried to pass it all off as a joke. But the truth is, the very name of that man sent shivers down my spine. The astrologer. He made it his business to know everything that went on in town and to become involved in it somehow. A few days later, a note was delivered to me. It contained five words. I want to see you. That's all. No please or if it's convenient or by your leave. Just an order. As if he had no doubt it would be obeyed. So kind of you to come, Theodore. Yes, sir. You were there when Peter claims he found this money. Oh, well, it's true, sir. I was there. Uh, he came upon the purse, and it was filled with gold ducats. It was? How many? Oh, over 1,100. Exactly how many? 1,107. But Peter gave out that there were 1,100. Uh, um... I suppose he gave it a round number. Oh, that settles it. Settles what, sir? Here, oh, my lad, that money was stolen. Oh, but 
I was there when, when he found it. True, but were you there when he stole it? But who says he stole it? It's the only way he could have received it. He then hid the purse on the path, waited for a witness to come along. The witness happened to be you. And he pretended to find it. Oh, but that's not the way it happened. How else could it have happened? How else? Could I dare to tell him about the mysterious stranger? Well, that would get me burned at the stake. And besides, how did I even know for sure there was a stranger? Mysterious or otherwise, I didn't know what to say. So, I said nothing. I wandered around for hours just trying to think. And then, finally, I decided to go see Uncle Peter. But he wasn't at home. Um, where is he, Margaret? In prison. No. The money, the gold, is in the hands of the sheriff. And Uncle Peter must wait for trial. Margaret, he is innocent. I know, but... But the astrologer is inflaming the entire town against him. Why? Why does the astrologer hate him? I don't know. How will you live? Oh, I'll manage somehow. People will stop sending their children here for music lessons. And, Margaret, you know how I feel. No. No. Thank you, Theodore, but I... I would only bring you misfortune. I don't care. You would after a while. Well, then at least let me help you. I couldn't take anything from anyone, Theodore. The Lord will help. With all due respect, it didn't look as if the Lord was going to be of much help. Old Ursula, uh, who was cook, chambermaid, housekeeper, and everything else for Uncle Peter, tried the best she could, but... She was unable to create miracles. I tried giving her money, which she accepted after I had told her to tell the proud Margaret that she had found the money in the street. But that couldn't go on indefinitely. There's a limit to how much money one can find lying around and how often. I was walking through the woods feeling very sorry about everything when suddenly he was standing there, Satan himself. Why? Why did you let these things happen to Uncle Peter? Well, I didn't let anything happen. I told you, and quite clearly, it would affect the course of the rest of his life. Finding that money would set an entire new chain of events in motion. Sorry, but we have to do something to help. Why? Why do you always feel you have to help people? You see where it can lead. But I can't just let him go under. Why not? Huh. I, uh... I suppose that's the difference between you and me. Now, let, let me tell you the difference between us. Man is made of dirt. Remember, I saw him being made. I am not made of dirt. Man is a, a museum of diseases, a home of impurities. He comes today, he's gone tomorrow. I am of the aristocracy of the imperishables. <laughs> yes, oh yes, one more thing. It's the smallest thing, but the most important. You know what it is? No. Man has the moral sense. The moral sense. Hmm. Do you know what that is? The moral sense. I'm not sure that I do. Well, you should find out. You have it. I don't. And that's the difference between us. I couldn't win an argument with him. We walked along the path, chatting about everything under the sun, when I happened to notice Ursula, old Ursula, sitting underneath a tree. She had a sickly-looking stray kitten in her lap. Satan, yes? Help her. Why? She works for Uncle Peter and Margaret. She and Margaret are starving. Help her. To help Margaret. Once again, you want me to help someone. Just just see that they have enough to eat. You know what I told you about introducing a different link into the chain of someone's life? But they're starving. Oh, this moral sense of yours. Very well. 
Good day, Mother. What have you got there? Any fool can see a kitten. <laughs> I understand you're very poor. Why do you want to have another mouth to feed? Why not give that poor thing to some rich person? No. The rich wouldn't want this unfortunate creature. It's only the poor that have charity in their hearts. God will provide for this kitten. Oh? What makes you think so? I know so. Not a sparrow falls to the ground without his seeing it. Ah, yes, yes, but it falls just the same, huh? So what good is seeing it fall? What good does it do the sparrow? No. Go about your business, you blasphemous fool. I'll, I'll take a stick to you. I was terrified. There was no way to talk to Satan. But he only smiled at her as if a mere mortal were incapable of insulting him. She jumped to her feet and the kitten leaped from her lap and started running around her. She was amazed. Well, well why, what's come over it? A, a while ago, the kitten could hardly walk. Well, why don't you keep it? Oh, oh it's such a pretty one. The home is so lonely with the master locked up in jail. Oh, poor Miss Margaret. Oh, she'd be glad of the company. Besides, you can have an income from that cat. An income? Are you mad? This particular kind of cat is called a lucky cat. Mm. And why is it lucky? Well, the cat isn't particularly lucky. The owner is lucky. And why is the owner lucky? Because every morning the owner of this cat finds four silver groschen in her pocket. Have you nothing better to do? You're lying, making a fool of me. Now look in your pocket. You'll be punished for that. I, I, in, in my pocket, I, I have one, two, three, four silver groschen. Oh, oh, sir. Dear, kind master and benefactor, let me kiss your hand. I told you it was a lucky cat. Oh, it is. It is. The three of us walked back to the house. And Ursula said, we must stay for supper. Poor Margaret. She didn't mean to be inhospitable, but what on earth was there to eat? She was so embarrassed. But that cat was an enchanted thing. If you put a fish in the frying pan, as soon as you took it off, bang! Another one appeared in its place. If you poured wine from a bottle, there was just as much left as before you started. Margaret was absolutely astounded by it all. More fish? Yes, mistress. So where did you get it, Ursula? It's a gift of providence. And the wine? Providence. Now, Ursula? Miss Margaret, don't you believe in providence? Well, of course I do, sir. Well, then why do you question it? When you see it. Well, I, I don't know. I have chicken and beef. Ursula? Providence, mistress. I stole a glance at Satan. He had that amused smile on his face. And I looked at Ursula and Margaret. <laughs> they were so happy. From being faced with actual starvation, they were now living in the midst of plenty. I was convinced that Finally, everything would be all right. After all, what could go wrong here? Our friend Theodore. He keeps thinking everything's going to be all right. At times, he forgets he's a character by Mark Twain, who liked to set his heroes up and then knock them down. We have some more ups and downs due in Act 3, which I shall bring to you in just a few moments. Once again, Theodore has asked the mysterious stranger, who is Satan himself, or else his nephew, and does it matter, to interfere with what seems to be a natural course of human events. And really, he asked for little enough, just some food to keep them alive. And the stranger certainly has been generous, probably too generous. Yes? Oh, uh, you're 
You sell a Noir, aren't you? Yes, Master. What? What are you doing here? Oh, I... I work here for Ursula. You do? Oh, yes. I, I, I scrub the pots and pans and dishes and floors and windows and walls. I, I scrub everything. Uh, is Miss Margaret M? Oh, no, sir. She, she is not home. And uh, Ursula? Oh, yes. She's drinking her tea in the kitchen, sir. Come in. How do you like my servant, Master Theodore? But uh, is it wise? Wise? I can afford her. You should know all about my lucky cat. I can have anything I want. And you know what I wanted all my life. What I'm trying to say is... A servant. Now, this might not mean anything to you, but if you were a servant and spent all your years serving others... Why, you'd want to I'm asking if it's wise to engage Giselle Anar. After all, her, her grandmother was burned as a witch. I know, but there's nothing wrong with her. Oh, I'm not saying there is. I only think... The truth is, she's the only one I could get to come here and work for me. Of course, I worry by nature, and... Since I feel the way I do about Margaret, I worry about any trifle that might seem to threaten her. But this time I tried to dismiss my worries. I almost succeeded. And then I was walking down the street in the village. I was about to turn the corner when I heard voices. I knew those voices. One was Gisela. The other was the voice of the astrologer. So, Gisela, my good girl, what are you doing these days? Well, sir, I'm employed by Ursula. Ursula? She's the housekeeper for Uncle Peter. She gives me two silver groschen a week. Two silver groschen? Besides my keep and my clothes. She must be wealthy. Oh, they live off the side of the land, let me tell you. The prince himself don't sit down to a better table. Well, well, well. Thank you, Gisela. That thank you that sent cold shivers down my spine. I had to do something. The astrologer. He'd visit the house. He'd, he'd see the frying pan that never emptied itself. Uh, the wine bottle that was always full. His mind would gladly leap to one conclusion. Witchcraft. And both Margaret and Gisela would be doomed. There was nothing I could do by myself. I needed help. Are you looking for me? You have to help. Again? Please. <laughs> you want me to save them from being charged with witchcraft? Admit it. Well, uh, no, not exactly. I, I, wa I want you to interfere, but not really interfere. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm only asking for a return to the status quo. Let it be as if, as if you didn't help. Oh. Well, that's very simple, isn't it? You're so simple, you don't even need me. You could handle the matter yourself. Me? Of course. What is the, um, what is the source of all their bounty? The, the cat. Yes, the lucky cat. Therefore, all you have to do is uh, get rid of the cat. Get rid of the cat? And kill the cat. Oh, but I couldn't kill an innocent animal in, uh, in cold blood. Margaret will never talk to me again. Well, if she's to be burned at the stake as a witch, she'll never talk to you again either. Are you actually weighing between Margaret on the one hand and that cat on the other? Oh, 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 oh this moral sense that you humans have. <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> He knew perfectly well where I was going, and I could hear him laughing off in the distance as I raced for Margaret's cottage. I prayed to be on time to get there before the astrologer did. Theodore. Where's the cat? Why do you want it? Where is it? Your lives depend on it. You're taking leave of your senses. Oh, there she is. Theodore. Put that cat down. What are you doing? I'm taking her away. Away? Why? Do you want me to kill her here in front of your eyes? Theodore, you can't. I said get out of my way. There isn't a moment to lose. Ah, good morning. I knocked, but no one heard, so I came in. 
Are we having a lover's quarrel? Oh, Sir Astrologer, I, I was just leaving. Theodore, I never want to see you again. Well, deed has been done, I see. Yes. But you'll never speak to me again. Well, women seldom realize how long never can be. You saved her. The astrologer asked if he could have a bite of food and a drink of wine. And you know, there was nothing in the house. (laughs) Nothing at all. I've lost her. I've lost her for good. He was quite disturbed about it. And angry with himself for having listened to the wild story of a stupid young girl. Well, well, well. All in all, it was a good day's work for you. Why did I have to get rid of that cat? Oh, that cat was wandering alone in the woods and ill just a few weeks ago. It was doomed in any event. I didn't see my mysterious stranger for a while after that. I didn't see anyone. Margaret would have nothing to do with me. And I didn't care to have anything to do with anyone else. Life was lonely. And sorrowful. And I was having all sorts of melancholy thoughts. When there was a knock on my door one morning. Theodore. Margaret. May I... May I come in? Oh, please. I've... I've come here to ask you a favor. Anything. The Duke arrived this morning. And my uncle is to be tried this afternoon. Oh. And he needs a lawyer. You want me to defend your uncle? Yes. Oh, but I'm not really very good. You believe my uncle is innocent. In your heart, you believe it, don't you? Yes. Then you'll be better than a smart lawyer who doesn't believe it at all. Margaret, about the cat... I... I can only believe you had a good purpose in mind, although... (laughs) What it was, I'll never understand. Then you forgive me. I forgive you. How could I possibly get Uncle Peter acquitted? The astrologer was put in the witness box. I did the best I could. Now, uh, Sir Astrologer, you claim these gold coins are yours. I do, young man. I, myself, was present when Peter found them. You mean when he claimed he found them? If the money is yours, how did you come by it? I found the bag in the road. Uh, When? More than two years ago. And what did you do? I brought it home, hid it in a secret place in my observatory tower, intending to find the owner if I could. I made diligent inquiry, but nothing came of it. And then? And then I thought, why not use the money to finish the foundling wing in the orphan asylum? So I took the money out of its hiding place and counted it to make sure it would be enough. And then, I'm sorry to say this, just as I was restoring the bag to its hiding place, I looked up, and there was Peter standing behind me. Wow. How could that be? Oh, he often came to my place unannounced to ask for a little help. He was quite needy. Proceed, sir. I became uneasy and decided not to use the money just then, but to wait a bit longer in case the owner might show up. And then? When I heard of Peter's find, I was happy for him, naturally. Mm, Naturally? I had absolutely no suspicion. Until I discovered my own coins were gone. And I detected three suspicious circumstances in Peter's story. Well, please name them. A. Peter claimed to have found his money in a path. I found mine in the road. B. His find consisted exclusively of gold ducats. So did mine. C. He found 1,107 ducats. I found exactly the same. It was telling evidence. I I could see it on the faces of all in the court, especially the Duke. 
Besides, who would be inclined to disbelieve so powerful a person as the astrologer? They would find Peter guilty for sure. And suddenly he was there. Satan, in the back of the room. I turned to the Duke. Uh, Your Excellency, may I have a short respite? Granted. Listen to me. We must save him. <laughs> you you never learn the <laughs> disgrace of a scaffold. Your moral sense, it will be the death of you one day. Go back there and call a witness. What witness? It will occur to you at the right time. <laughs> Uh, now, Sir Astrologer, uh, suppose we prove that this money on the table here is not the same money that you found. Then it would belong to Peter. Mm, I would say so. Your Excellency, may I call another witness? Uh, I should say witnesses. Uh, Your Excellency, it's too late in the trial for new witnesses. But uh, these are not new witnesses. They've already been partially examined. Uh, The coins. The coins, Your Excellency, they are witnesses. But coins cannot speak, young man. But they can. Witchcraft. Be careful, young man. Look, you see... Each coin speaks. Each coin declares it is not the one the astrologer claims he found two years ago. By its date, each coin proclaims it. Each coin declares it did not exist two years ago. If Your Excellency will examine the dates, he will see that these coins were only minted at the end of this year. They're scarcely six months old. shout of approval. The astrologer had finally been brought to book at last, and the money was restored to Peter, and everyone crowded around him. He had many friends now. I looked around to thank Satan, but he had disappeared. And finally, I made my way over to old Uncle Peter. Sir, what is the moral sense? The moral sense? Why, that is the faculty that enables us to distinguish good from evil. Well, that sounds as if it, as if it could be considerable trouble. Oh, yes, yes, yes. But it's the most valuable thing we have. Valuable? Good heavens, lad. It's the one and only thing that lifts us above the beasts and makes us certain that one day we shall inherit immortality. Theodore never saw Satan again. Not in this life, anyhow. But he never forgot him. And he never forgot the moral sense, either. Nor should you. Nor should I. And neither did Mark Twain. Even so, there were times when he insisted the thing was more trouble than it was worth. There's never any trouble around here. You just wait around for a few seconds, and I'll be back. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Are you looking for a nursing home? Well, here are a few tips. Start by getting a list of the licensed facilities in your area from your local health department. Find out whether they are certified to receive Medicare and Medicaid payments. Also, talk to your friends and talk to your neighbors who've placed a family member in a home. You see, it's important to visit a nursing home to check the facilities and the services. For example, food handling, patient care, in-service staff training, housekeeping, and patient activities. Now, before you sign an admission agreement, you read it carefully, including the fine print, and ask a lot of questions about what's included in the price. A number of nursing homes charge extra for such items as wheelchairs, air mattresses, and personal laundry. A tip from your Better Business Bureau. the funniest man our country had ever produced. And yet, 
underneath a wisdom and an understanding. For it was Mark Twain who wrote, What a silly, poor thing is human life. How childish its ambitions. How ridiculous its pomps. How trivial its dignities. How cheap its heroisms. How capricious its course. How brief its flight. How comic its tragedies. How tragic its comedies. And then, having said all this, he proceeded to make it all very funny. Our cast included Tony Roberts, Joe Silver, Miriam Seldes, Bryna Rayburn, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Interstar is a fact. Not to my astronomers. Well, that means nothing. They are finite. Only their souls are infinite. And a few of them, in a disembodied state, have visited my planet. Dr. Sargent is one of those rare souls. You have told Mr. Dennis he has everything. And he thinks you're a lunatic. That's right. You, you sit there and tell me you're from another planet. And I'm a god. And that interest... I... <laughs> well, tell me more. Lord Z is the ruler. I am his aide. Intrastar is the gathering place, a way station, if you will, for all the human souls. They arrive there after death for redistribution in the unborn. Reincarnation is a fact? Yes. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.